Hey everybody, welcome back. I am Jody King from the Jody King Art Channel here on YouTube and JodyKing.com. Today we are talking about brushes and tools. I've got all my favorite tools here, all my favorite brushes and, and things that I like to use. And the reason they are so important is not just because we like to have all the things, although I do like to have all the things, <laughs> just no, not playing, I do. But the brushes and my brushes and tools um, and your brushes and tools are so important because they help us compositionally with our art. So when we think about how um, when we start a painting and everything is going really great, um, but then sometimes slash every single time the painting kind of goes south. <laughs> Somewhere within that we're like, like, man, this is, now I'm stuck. What, what am I gonna do now? Well, believe it or not, your brushes and tools can go a long way to getting you unstuck. And the reason is that 90% of the time, uh, when we are stuck or we get into that place in our work, um, we're stuck because of two things. It's either because of, well, 90% of the time, it's either because we are having trouble with composition or we're having trouble with values. So in my workshops that I teach and also on the online courses that I do, and then we have a private Facebook group so people post their work and I can help them out with it. Um, but 90% of the time what I see it's the people are stuck because of composition and values and your tools can really help you getting unstuck compositionally. Okay, so why is that? Number one, compositionally, it's important to have thick and thin lines in your work. So tools that are smaller like this, um, they really help to give us those, those thinner line qualities, right? So you'll have brushes like this and then you'll have the thicker brushes and those will really help give us that dance of opposites, the thick thick versus thin. Now my favorite um, paint brushes in this size, the brand is called Black Diamond. I've had these for years. I love um, the quality of the bristle. As long as I don't leave them in water for a week at a time, <laughs> the handles stay great. Don't do that. Don't leave your brushes in water for a week at a time. I don't know who does that. Anyway, Black Gold, the name is Black Gold and their Diamond Series. So my favorite are Black Gold Diamond Series. Then in terms of the larger brushes that I like, um, I always buy my larger brushes at hardware stores because they are just so expensive um, at the art supply stores and I find that that's really not necessary. But here's what's important. If you're gonna buy your brushes at the hardware store and they're gonna be these big thick ones, um, get the best quality brush you can from the hardware store. Um, like don't just go and buy the $2 brush, you know, get the better quality. The reason for that is that the less, the lower the quality of the brush, they will just shed all over your art. Now, if you've got lots of texture, maybe you don't care about that. I have lots of texture in my work, but you can still tell when it's a bristle, you know, hanging out there in the work. So I always buy the highest quality large brush from the hardware store that I can. Now, the other reason um, that I like to have all of these tools and why your tools are important is because um, compositionally, it's important to have hard edges and soft edges. So I love <laughs> these big old spatula things. This was made by Husky and again, I get it at the hardware store. Um, I think it's considered a trowel. These are both considered, I believe, trowels, and I get them from the hardware store. I will put the links to both of these um, below so that you can check them out. But what these do is that these will help give us the hard edges while we've got the softer edges with the brushes. So they're kind of like, it's hard to work for me, it's hard to work with one without the other because, well, first of all, it's super fun. But second of all, they just gave, give you these great lines. In terms of other things, my other favorite brushes for hard edges is I like these 
These are called color shapers. These color shapers are amazing for those, again, for those harder lines. But not only that, compositionally, another thing that, it's, um, that we want to have in our work is we wanna have those loud statements and also those quiet statements. So what these color shapers can do is we can go to the work and if the work is not, if the paint on the painting is not fully dry yet, we can just take this and remove some of the paint so that you have some places that you can see through it and it's a little softer, it's more transparent, and other places where it's very opaque. So these color shapers really help to remove paint where we don't want them and also to apply paint where we want those sharper edges. So that's cool. Now, one of my other favorite tools is actually just a little old sponge brush. Um, again, it's for the same reasons. It's because sponge, sponge brushes will give you a different line quality that some of the other tools like, you know, just regular brushes um, like this or these thicker brushes. These sponge brushes will give us a line quality that nothing else can give us. So I really, really like that. Um, and then what happens when you get a brush that looks like a bed head? <laughs> These bed head brushes are actually my favorite, favorite way that these, it's just my favorite. I don't know, it's just my favorite. Let me tell you why. Because when you're painting with this end of the brush and you're painting back and forth like this, you have a certain stroke. But when you just dip the paint a little bit with this and then you just rub it along the painting, it creates the coolest effects. I'm gonna demonstrate in a minute. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, it just creates the coolest effect and the coolest lines and also like some really, really cool blending. So we've got, we've got my black gold dynasty edition brushes we've got our um, scraping and spatula tools we've got our color shapers we've got our sponge brushes and we've got our thicker brushes these are the brushes and tools that i absolutely can't live without so i'm going to do a little bit of demonstration with the brushes now and you can see how they uh, do their thing Okay, now that we have seen what all the tools are, let's put them to work. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is a big old, big ass, fat hardware store brush. I'm just gonna get some paint on the canvas. This is a cheap old canvas just to demonstrate. Sorry about the little dent in it here. Don't just pretend it's not there. All right, so I've mixed up some paint. I've only got, uh, I took two colors and I made like a bunch from it. If you wanna see more about how I mix colors and uh, how you can use colors to get unstuck, head over to jodyking.com and check out my color course. I have taken two colors and I'm gonna show you how through the use of our tools, we can really make an impact. Let's hope I don't mess it up. All right, so I've get, got just this light blue here and I'm using this big paintbrush and just really basically to get a lot of paint on the canvas at one time. And you can see, you know, it kind of creates this really soft look. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the big old trowel that I like to use and I'm gonna get some paint on it and you'll see it's just a very different, could create a very, very different look. And you never quite know what's gonna happen, honestly, but it's pretty stinking cool. I mean, actually not being able to control it is one of the coolest parts of the whole thing. I'm gonna get a little bit more on there. And you can see you've got this really softness here and then kind of some cool stuff that's going on uh, in the rest of it. And then you've got this harsh line here and that's gonna really serve us as we start building the painting more and more. Now, when we talked about uh, thick versus thin lines, um, which is super important composition, 
We also talked about our uh, little bed head brush here. <laughs> Can you see this? How fun is that? I have woken up so many times looking like this. All right, so when we have this bed head brush, and you know, I also have a bigger one, got my bigger bed head, and you know, if it hasn't, if it's not splayed out enough, you can always splay it for you. But you can take your bed head brush and just kind of look, just kind of make these cool, very cool lines in here. You can take them all over the painting. You know, and again, you're not quite sure what's gonna happen, but it creates the coolest effect. All right, so we've got the bed head, we've got uh, the big old fat brush. Um, I wanna talk um, just a minute about um, the louder conversation, soft and loud um, within our paintings. So let's say that we have something underneath it like this, right? That we've got some sort of mark making on the painting. So we've got some mark making and we want to see the marks, but we don't want it to be just this really loud voice. So here, the values of it, it's, it's a pretty dark value compared to the other things, but so we just wanna quiet that down. So we've got our color shaper. We're gonna take a little bit of our color here. And with our color shaper, see how we're able to use it and we're still able to see some of the color through it but we're able to take away as much as we like and we can still see it. So this is one of those tools that kind of can quiet the conversation. Additionally, it can give you those sharp versus soft edges. So we can use it to go back for a sharp edge, just like that. So, oh, and it can create such, such, cool texture. So that's our color shaper. Now the other thing we talked about was thick lines and thin lines. So we've got some of these thicker things here going on and you can always use your small brush and just to create some other things that are working. I like to hold it kind of towards the end of the brush. That way it just, again, less control, more organic, much more organic lines, doesn't feel nearly as contrived. So we have that. And now let's get our big old stinking trowel here <laughs> and see what we can create. So I'm gonna just put a, just a little bit of paint on it. Yeah, like that. And just go for it. Never quite know what's gonna happen, do we? Oh. Can create some very, very cool mark making. So, again, I like a painting and I like a tool that you cannot completely control because it just creates more interest and a lot more fun. So we still have our, um, our uh, sponge brush here. We can go back in and do some blending here and there, soften up some edges like that. Yeah, so there you go. Those are all my favorite tools. I hope you liked them. If you like what you see here, please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out all of the tools uh, down below and definitely go follow me on Instagram or check out jodyking.com. Jody <laughs> Take care, peace out.